Give you praise, oh, just to give you praise, just to give you 
Come on, if he's your everything, get on your feet for just another few moments. Come on and lift up your voice and shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, he, you're my everything. You're my everything. You're the bright in the morning star. You're the lily of the valley. You're the rock of ages. You're my wheel in the middle of the wheel. You're the king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. You're food when I'm hungry. You're clothed when I'm naked. Hallelujah. You're my doctor when I'm sick. You're my counselor in the courtroom. Hallelujah. Woo. Lift your hands. Come on. You're my everything. You're my everything. Yes, Jesus. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Everyone said amen. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, let's thank God for the choir. Thank God for the band. Hallelujah. You know, even if you didn't say it, it's still true. God's our everything. I read the book. He said, outside of him, you can't do nothing. You ain't pumping your heart in and out. Your blood ain't just flowing. God. You couldn't even went to school if God didn't give you a brain. Come on. You couldn't even find your way home if God wasn't your compass. Come on here. He's a mind regulator. He's a heart fixer. He's a burden bearer. Come on. Are we in worship or not? I said, are we in worship or not? Are we here to lift up the name of Jesus? Is it all about Jesus right now? It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, if I was you, I'd bless him right now. I'd bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. All right. Woo. You didn't. You didn't get opportunity to worship long enough. Come back at six. You really want to finish? Come on back at six. We're going to do it some more at six o'clock. Hallelujah. If you wait till Sunday to get your praise on, you're going to come up short. Because how many know God is bigger than one hour? God is bigger than two hours. How good has God been? How many believe God needs some, some worship all, all week long? Amen? Now, I hadn't talked to uh, Sister Marcia, but she was getting in my message and, you know, making comments about I'm going to nail people to the floor. I'm not, but the Holy Ghost is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Turn to your neighbor and say, Bye. Say, this message is personal. I don't have time to talk to you today. I don't really have time to comment about you because this message is personal. Because mm -hmm. I want to talk to us today about being a junkie to sin. And the reason the Lord gave me a harsh word to get your attention. Because the first thing we want to say, I ain't no junkie. Well, just go down through the message with me. And I'm hoping that Tudor Bismarck, Bishop Tudor Bismarck, would catch this on YouTube because I'm going to use, you know, his, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, mm, the way he presents messages. I, I love him. I never met him. I've seen him before in, in Chicago minister, and I listened to some of his teachings. And so I got to work my case. I got to work my case. Just stay with me. Stay with me. I got to work my case. This ain't no get up on the floor and shout type of message. This is slow roll. Amen. Give honor to God and to our lovely companion, to all the elders and ministers and everyone 
that's here today and continue to pray for Mother Wade has been under attack with just lots of different pains in her shoulder area. So just pray for her. Amen. And we thank God uh, for all of you that are here today. Brother Leon, Di, and uh, his wife today. We thank God they're worshiping with us today. And just everyone that's here today, all the visitors, these visitors here with Sister Florence today. Thank God for you today. Everybody that's here today. Amen. Okay, we got all the niceties out of the way. Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so, the question is, are you a junkie to sin? Now, when you think about the word junkie, it's in definition of having an insatiable craving and desire for something that you cannot get away from. Insatiable hunger for something that you cannot get away from. No matter what, you find yourself addicted. Addiction, when you, when, you, when you are addicted to something, it means that you are bound by it. You, you, you have no control over it. It, 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 it controls your life. It, 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 it makes you go where you don't want to go. And it makes you do what you don't want to do. And it makes you say what you don't want to say. And act the way that you really don't want to act. And so why would pastor uh, uh, preach to church folks about being a junkie? Well, you heard of Alcohol Anonymous. Some of you've heard of F.A., Food Anonymous. Some of you've heard of uh, uh, Gambling Anonymous. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Some, some, some of you, you've heard of, 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 of uh, sexual addictions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you trace all of those things, they'll take you back to sin. Uh-huh. See, so when you get saved, you, you're not getting saved because you uh, uh, are not a person that's subject to sinning. You got saved to be delivered from sin. And so uh, also uh, note that when people are in these organizations, the first thing they want you to do when you come in is say, my name is so-and-so-and-so, and, -so -and, -so, and I am an alcoholic. So everybody in here, get on your feet. They can get on your feet. I know y'all say, I ain't going to do it. You better do it. Say your name. Put your name in there. Say your name. And I am a sinner saved by grace. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You be seated. See, this message is going to work two ways today. There's some folks who haven't gave up their addiction. And then there's some other folks in here who need to pray every day to not go back to being addicted. Uh-oh. Now look at all these different organizations I just mentioned. Why do they keep having meetings with the people? Why is it after they are delivered from their addictions, they always have group meetings? They always want them to come back and talk about how you doing. They want to see if you fell off the wagon. They want to see if you didn't got yourself caught up again. And they notice that if you don't show up for the regular meetings, it's a good indication that you went back to your addiction. Because usually when you go back to something that you were supposed to be delivered from, you really don't feel comfortable being around people who are already still with victory. Come on. So church folks, we're not in church on Sunday morning because we are delivered. We're in church this morning because we want to stay delivered. Can I get a witness? You know, if you say, I ain't no junkie, well, you need to at least admit that you are one that was a junkie. I got Bible. I got Bible. I know some of you say, I ain't buying none of this. <laughs> Romans 3 and 23. Romans 3 and 23. I got to work my case. Just wait, just wait. That's how Tudor Bismarck was. I got to work my case. Mm -hmm. 3 and 23 of Romans. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I don't think I told uh, uh, sound people to put it up, but you, you want to put up, first of all, you want to put up 
or, uh, man, where did I have that at? Oh, uh, man, what did I do with it? I'm going to find it. Hold on. I got to put it. I got to put it. Oh, yeah, one. Matthew's one and uh, 21. Matthew's one and 21. It probably won't be on the big screen, but you got your Bibles. One and 21 of Matthew's. I'm trying to work my case. Okay, look. And she shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their what? So Jesus came to deliver junkies. <laughs> Jesus came to deliver folks who had in uh, uh, ability, uh, 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 extreme cravings, uh, uh, an addiction, and, and they couldn't get themselves free. So Jesus came to break the chains. Amen. So he came to save us from our sins. Uh, you understand? The reason why we're in church today, if you are a Christian, you are saying publicly, I am here because I needed to be saved from my sins. And if you haven't made that confession, then you're at least considering it. That's why you're here. And some of you may be here and say, I'm not even considering it. You in this room, the Holy Ghost got you considering it because you hearing God right now speak to you about you need to consider where you are. Either you are a junkie to sin or you are a, a person that's an ex-junkie. I got Bible. I know you. I, I ain't no ex-junkie. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you know that's the hardest thing to get a junkie to admit? That they're a junkie. Can I get a witness? They ain't got but 70 pounds on their body. They're supposed to be 220 and they'll tell you, I'm all right. Just let the wind blow. Just blow them all across Danville because they Come on. And I mean, no, some of the best liars are junkies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When you love something, you can lie so good. Anybody ever gave a junkie some money and you know he just talked you out of your market, your, your money? You say, I just gave him. I know, I know he lied. No, let me tell you, my mama just died, my auntie and my cousin. Junkies have ability to lie when they want what they want. Any junkies in this room? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the hardest thing to get junkies to admit that they're addicted. That they have an a, a in, 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 in unquenchable, un, uh, you know, just unbelievable desire for something. Mm-hmm. And it don't matter that it ain't good. It's just that when you are junkie to something, you think bad is good. You love it so much, you're getting so much pleasure out of it. You got so much dopamine that that, that pleasure gland is opened up so wide it floods you. They tell me when you smoke crack for the first time, it releases so much of the pleasure chemical into your body that you chase it for the rest of your life unless Jesus delivers you. That's why they're 98 pounds and 78 pounds because they're still trying to get that high again. You never get it again. You never can get it again. What has this got to do with church? It's got everything to do with folks showing up for the meeting on Sunday and won't admit that they are a backslidden junkie or that they are a junkie that is not even trying to get delivered or they are ex-junkie that's trying to hold on. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Can I get a witness? Come on, y'all. Let's have some real church today. Let's not play church. I mean, I don't know about y'all. I need to be here. I, I need to be in the meeting because I don't want to go back where he brought me from. Come on here. I don't want to get in church and pretend like I ain't no longer tempted. Ain't nothing going on with me. You're going to be the first one we read about. I know you don't smoke dope in church. No, you don't drink 40s in church. Wait till 115, see what you do. You ain't gonna scratch off on the lottery in church. You, you no, 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 no. But you know what you're gonna do at 115? See, junkies have the ability to fool you for a little while. They can smile for a little. All alone, they think about getting high. Right now, somebody sitting in there, you, you, you ain't with your, 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 your boyfriend that you fornicate with or your girlfriend that you fornicate with, or you ain't got your mistress necessarily sitting beside you in church, but your sugar daddy ain't really here, but if you're a junkie, 
I mean, you, you, you know how long can a junkie go before they start having the shakes? Huh? When the sweat start popping off the top of their brow. How long can you stay in this church service before you have to go? Before you say, I got to get out of here because my demon's calling me. Amen. Okay, where we at? Matthews, what is it now? Three. Nope, we're Romans, uh, Romans 3 and 23. I'm all over the place. Romans 3 and 23. I got to work my case. Got to work my case. We're talking about being a junkie to sin. That means you're bound by something that you can't get free of. Now, Jesus' assignment was to deliver us from sin. Am I right? So if you really are a Christian, then that means you have been delivered from sin. Can I get a witness? You ain't still in the church sinning. you in the church, uh, what you call defending your position. Amen? I'm not here to play church. I'm here to say I am bought and blood bought. Come on here. Hallelujah. 3 and 23. For who has sinned? Who? Who? Tell your neighbor, you, Mr. Proud, Miss Proud, Miss, look like, uh, I, I asked him to do that. Don't be looking at them. Come and talk to me after the message. Okay, don't be tripping on your neighbor. I'm just using him a little bit to help me preach today. But the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that don't mean that anybody in here can chunk any rocks. I get so tired of so many folks in, that are uh, 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 either junkies of sin or ex-junkies of sin acting like they don't know what it is to be a sinner. When he just said everybody didn't mess up. Everybody in here ought to be able to look, relate why folks get high. You ought to be able to relate why they sleep around. You ought to relate why they drink and cuss and fight and act a fool. Because you can say, I see me. I see what God did for me. But no, you can get in here now and act like that scripture don't apply to you. Well, God just busted you out. God called you a sinner, not Pastor Miller. God called us. I ain't preaching because I'm right. I'm preaching because I'm an ex-junkie saved by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And every day, come on, let's keep it real. Come on, somebody say it in me. Did somebody say every day? I got to stay prayed up. Come on, somebody. Come on now. If you really real, you, you got to come to church. If you really, really don't want to be a junkie again, you got to come to Bible study. You got to read your Bible. You got to go into prayer. You got to go into fasting because that thing that God delivered you from, it want to live again. If the world got enough sense to have secular meetings to call people back together that have had a problem with addiction, what's wrong with us church folks? I go to church when I want to. I show up when I feel like it. You are a backslidden junkie. You, 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 you one of these ones that pretending like it really wasn't that bad. I don't never want to forget how bad it was. I don't never forget where he picked me up from. I don't never want to forget the slop that he picked me up out of. The shame that I brought on my family. I don't never want to forget how I hurt my mother and father. I don't want to never forget how I hurt my wife and my child. I don't want to never forget. So I need a Sunday morning reminder. I need somebody to tell me that the Lord... It's my shepherd. Hallelujah. Come on here. He said all have sinned. We don't mess around with these old stuck up in the wind and no old folks in church. Them the ones that are hiding the most. Oh yeah, God delivered them from them. But come on, this is church testimony. I want to thank the Lord for delivering me. I want to thank the Lord for saving me and filling me with the precious Holy Ghost. I want to thank the Lord for keeping me and I want to thank how the Lord watched. Now tell us where he brought you from. Come on and tell when you wasn't mother so-and-so. When you wasn't reverend so-and-so. When you wasn't deacon so-and-so. When you wasn't choir member so-and-so. Come on and tell when he took that. 
switch out of your hip and straighten you up made you look at a woman and say I'm not a homosexual but I'm now come on tell somebody where he brought this sinner from tell him how God picked you up and turned you around one day. come on here come on somebody say I'm an ex-junkie the Lord hallelujah I'm in church because I need to be here this morning. Been saved now, going on 32 years, but the devil ain't never stopped knocking at my door. He's been trying to get the old preacher back. He said, you know, I know what you like. And I say, you know, you know, I know you know. And that's why I'm going to get on my knees. And I'm going to say, Lord, help me, help me, Lord, help me. Yo, how many, how many know? <laughs> Do you loud? How many know when you get real scared, your voice will go up real high? Help me! Help me! <laughs> Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. You might have some bad tone in your voice, but when you get real scared, you sound just like a woman. Help me, Jesus! Help! Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, tell your neighbor. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Woo! <laughs> if anybody asks you, what's wrong with me? I'm on my way. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Come on, sit down. I got to work my case. I got to, I got to work my case. Now, this is good coming up. This is real good coming up. First John 1 and 8. Look, 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 look at this right here. I got to work my case. Mm -hmm. First John 1 and 8. Yeah. John. First John, not St. John. John 1 and 8. Now, this is, this is real hard right here for junkies. If we say that we have no sin, uh-oh. If we say we have no sin, if we say we have no sin, if we, they just told us everybody in that other verse of Scripture said in 1, oh, my God. In Romans 3 and 23, he said everybody didn't sin. No, if you say you have no sin, you're an alien. You weren't born here. Come on here. Come on, how many know David was a man after God's own heart? Come on, even after Peter got full of the Holy Ghost, he still had to get rebuked. Y'all quiet now, all you full of the Holy Ghost. They ain't never done nothing since you got the Holy Ghost. The devil is a liar. Kid, you don't go to club no more. The Lord still know where you live. <laughs> yeah you got a ring on your finger now but you still was nasty just yesterday maybe to your wife or your husband that demon still coming up another way and if you don't be honest enough to get on your knees and say Lord it's me with my same self okay question question was Adam and Eve able to sin before they sinned I ain't got time to fool with y'all. Yes. Were they able to be disobedient before they were disobedient? If they could not have been tempted, they never would have been tempted. If they never could have messed up, they never would have messed up. So what does that mean? After you get full of the Holy Ghost, you can still sin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Devil still can come by your house. Talk trash to you to get you caught up again. Come on here. I must work my case. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Hardest thing to do is get a junkie to admit that he's a junkie. You ever seen those interventions on TV? They get the whole family, they everybody crying but the junkie. Please stop. 
stop. Junior, don't do it, Junior. Here, Dr. Phil here was a couple weeks ago. He going to pay for the whole clinic. He going to pay for the flights. He going to pay for everything just to get the little girl to go. I mean, she's in a nice suburban family. I mean, she got all the possibilities of being successful. She ain't in no poverty-stricken situation. She got folks that love her and want her. And Dr. Phil and the whole family said, baby, would you please go to the clinic? I'm not going. You can't make me. I'm not going. Hardest thing to do is get sinners to admit that they sinners. Uh-oh. 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 No, no, you ain't talking to me. I read the book. He said every one of us didn't sin. Now, if you say you ain't got no sin, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to get folks to com confess Jesus. It's hard. You go out to every one of us that are ministers and, and believers, and we try to witness to our family. Go on with that. You can't make me get saved. Here y'all go again, condemning people. Here y'all are always trying to judge somebody. That's a junkie talking right there. Ain't that junkie talk? On their way to prison, on their way to OD and tonight, and you trying your best to do an intervention, but you can't get them to admit they in trouble. I preach up here till I sweat, and folks look at me as if, who he talking to? I left some folks in Champagne mad this morning. They got this at 8 o'clock early. Messed their whole day up. I felt it in the room. There were some folks mad. You know who it was? The leadership. Very one want to carry the title of preacher and deacon and choir member and elder and apostle and evangelist. Them the worst folks to get to admit that they are dealing with an ex-junkie problem that then rose up again. <laughs> Cussing, talking about you a preacher. Lying, talking about you a preacher. At home, threatening your wife like you a preacher. Talking about you a preacher and you doing those things. In the lottery window, in the bingo game, talking about you, you saved. Well, I know the same thing getting ready to happen in here. Leadership, tightening up. The most... Difficult junkies and ex-junkies in the church are folks who want to carry titles. A lot of folks that are, are ex-junkies, they want to hide in the church and yet not be delivered from their addiction. They think they're fooling old Miller, and you can fool old Miller, but you ain't going to never get up early enough to fool Almighty God. You ain't going to never get up early enough to pull the wool over God's eyes. God know where you've been all last week. He know what you said to your wife or husband. He know who you winked and blinked at at the intersection. He know who you passed a note to. He know if you got some weed at home, a 40 at home, you got some man or woman in your bed that ain't your husband, ain't your wife. He already know when you get ready to go to the hotel motel. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Say, I need to be here. I ain't here for dressing up. I'm here because I, I need to be here. <laughs> I needs to be in church. <laughs> I don't need to be around nothing that trigger my demon. Come on. See, ex-junkies better always remember where you fell at. Because the devil ain't got no new tricks. If he know you was a womanizer, he gonna bring women around you. If he know you like drugs, he gonna bring drugs around you. If you was a man chaser, he gonna bring some fine men around you. You was a gambler, bingo player, lottery player. You was all caught up in the gambling. He gonna bring gambling around you. You was a liar, he gonna bring some lying situations. That's to see if you're a lie again. Did you do it? <laughs> Give you one more chance. Did you do it? How many you know you shake your head that you didn't do it? Admit you lied. You too say to say it, but you just. I didn't say nothing. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Oh, that's a junkie talking right there. How I many of them junkies can talk real good? 
junkie will tell you everything but the truth. Can I get a witness? Nobody been more messed up than to be in church with a bunch of lying preachers. A bunch of folks in leadership who pretend that they love God and they'll mess you up before the service is over. Get it through speaking in tongues and rolling around in the floor but have enough nerve to tell you I think you need to be delivered. You, what was you rolling for a few minutes ago? Get up and tell why you was rolling. I was rolling for my demon. No, you ain't going to get up. You're going to say, I was just in the spirit. No, you was running. The Holy Ghost was whooping you all over the church. Spirit of God was chasing you. Don't tell me God ain't good to us. Come on here. How many know we need to be in church? Come on, every time the door is open, we need to be here. Minister Charlene wanted to say to the adults, Sunday school is going to happen all summer for you. There's a teacher that's still going to hold down the adult Sunday school class all summer. So don't you even say, well, I backslid because Charlene. That's a junkie talking right there. How many of those junkies always blame other folks? How many of when folks are messing up their money and their marriage and their life, when you are junkie to sin, you always blame somebody else? Had so many folks leave here because they didn't want to hear this preaching anymore and they say they wasn't getting nothing. I, I left because Pastor Miller, he, he, he wasn't able to give me anything. I got all I could get from him. So when you leave here, I want to see you doing better instead of worse. Uh -uh. If you were preaching here, why aren't you preaching there? Uh oh. <laughs> you was faithful here, why aren't you faithful there? Because you get tired. You, you went on and laid back down with your devil. You went on back to your junkie life. <laughs> it's like Sister Martha, uh, uh, what's your name? I'm drunk now, Marsha. <laughs> My assignment ain't to be y'all's friend. How many know you go to them clinics, they don't tell you what you want to hear? Folks is mad. You've seen some of that reality stuff. They have them folks in them junkie clinics and they be mad. <sighs> you can't have it. So every time I say you can't fornicate. You can't be an adulterer. You got to love your enemy. You got to go in and ask your wife forgiveness, your husband's forgiveness. That's what them junkies do. They get mad when you tell them the truth. Y'all quiet now. Look at number nine. Look at nine. Number nine. One and nine. The first John said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you know what the hardest thing to do is get folks to confess their sin. They want to make every excuse other than I am a sinner. That's what they do in the AA meeting. I am an alcoholic. Food Anonymous, I am a food junkie. You gamblers anonymous, I am a gambler. Get into church. I ain't done nothing. I ain't even done nothing. I'm just here because my mama got me here, my daddy got me here, and I'm just, you know, don't want to be a heathen, so I show up and put my name on some roll. I want to have a legal funeral when I die. I joined the church and had my name on the road. Hmm. I want to say to somebody, he was a member of so and so and so and so. A junkie in hiding. Hmm. Amen. I'm going to keep saying that one of the most, the last selfish act of a junkie is to say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Because they ain't really asking to be forgiven of their sins. They know they're getting ready to die, so they don't want to go to hell. But if they can live on, they party on. Uh-oh. I said if they could live on, they party on. Why you think God never tell us when he coming to get us? Bunch of junkies. You coming at noon? It's 11.45. I got 10 more minutes. And five more minutes. Okay, three minutes. Okay, two minutes, one minute. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I accept Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, come into my life and take you and baptize me. And thank you, Lord. Tell the truth. Folks right now addicted to tobacco will still smoke while they got the oxygen tank by the bed. Some folks get from the clinic and the doctor says, you do not have the AIDS virus. They go right out and sleep with somebody else. When you're a junkie. 
You go right out from one abusive relationship to the next one when you're a junkie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're quiet now. When you're addicted to something, you can't get away from it. The only one I know that can get us away from it, his name is Jesus. And then after he get us away from it, he demands that we bow down every day and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Save this sinner again today, Lord. Save me that I don't go back again, Lord. Let me get in there and hear some more of the word, God. Let me get around some real believers today. God. You don't never show up because you don't need to be here. Every time we show up, we need to be here. He said, at the end time, as you see the days are drawing more evil, make sure you do not forsake the assembling of yourself together with believers. Come on. I got to go. We got to go. Look at this real quick. Two and one and ten. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We say we haven't sinned, we're lying. And the truth is not in us. His word ain't not in us. Come on. That's why nobody in this room ought to feel bad because some folks won't confess their sin. Just look at them and say, you just like me. At least I confess mine. Uh, look how quiet it's getting. We ain't here because we right. We're here because he's right. You're saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. Not because we ever done anything to earn it and you'll never earn it. I'll never earn it. Who's keeping us today? The grace of God. Somebody say, oh, but the grace of God. If it wasn't for the mercy of God and the grace of God, where would we be today? Come on. Turn to your neighbors. I'm holding on. Tell your other neighbor, just keep on keeping on. Y'all know who said that all the time? A guy that now say he don't believe in hell. Carlton Pearson. Come on, don't ever don't think the devil ain't going to still come after you because God anoints you. The more God anoints you, the more the devil coming after you. It's because you preaching today. You better get on your face and ask God to keep you. He said, what good would it do for me to preach to others and then become a castaway? Everybody else get to go to heaven and you go to hell because you allowed yourself not to confess your sin. I mean, when do you confess sin in your mind? Hello? Your sin is first conceived in your heart. When your sin is finished in your heart, boom, it manifests. You wasn't just automatically, just how did I fall into adultery? You was thinking about it. How did you get a 40 back in your hand? You were thinking about it. How did you get a cigarette again? You were thinking, don't tell me. I don't know how she got in my bed. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I don't even know how I smoke weed. I don't even know how I smoke Please. Scratch off. I don't even know how I scratch off lottery tickets. Five, ten, bingo cards. Bingo what? How you get there? Because you didn't convince yourself because you're a junkie. It ain't nothing wrong. Stand up in this church and tell everybody in this church right now if you don't believe it's wrong to play the lottery and play the bingo. And stand up in here and it's okay for you to shack. Stand up in here. It's okay for you to smoke weed. Stand up. Can't get nobody standing up in the church. But when you leave out of here. <laughs> pimping with your sin. Pimping with it. How many know a junkie look right back at you and go and do what they're going to do? <laughs> Can I get a witness? Come on, let's tell the truth and shame the devil this morning. We need to be here today. Come on, somebody say, I need to be here. Come on, someone say, every time the door open, I need to be here. This church ain't got you on lock. This is Sundays and Wednesdays. We ain't got you on lock. So don't tell me you can't show up on Wednesday when you don't want to hear what does say the Lord. You don't want no Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You're going you gonna to fill yourself full of the world all week and think one thirty minutes in here or hour on Sunday because some of you make sure you don't come too late. You don't come early. You ain't never been to Sunday morning. You don't even know what happened at 11 o'clock at this church. You've been here 25 years. You don't even know. What they do at 11 o'clock? I'm always 12, 15. 12 o'clock. I'm a leader, too. I'm always late. A leader. Go to work all weekend. You never late. But every Sunday, you late for church. 
You quiet now. Mm -hmm. You showing your own self up. You ain't nobody got to talk about you. You showing your, don't get mad at nobody in the church. Come talk to me after service. You get mad, come up and tell me after service. I don't appreciate what you said, preacher. All I want you to do is show me in the Bible what I said wasn't Bible. When you come to me, bring Bible with you. Whatever I preached this day that wasn't in the Bible, bring it to me. The Bible said we ought to be faithful. You need not tell us. We ought to be committed. Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Is that what he said? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Oh, hit and miss junkies. Come when I feel like it. I ain't singing no more because I don't like the pastor no more. That's what I don't sing. That's why I don't preach. I don't want to do nothing in that church because I'm mad with the preacher. You make sure you check your little uh, uh, time card when you get to heaven. See how that's going to work. Well, you didn't do nothing. Well, I was mad with the preacher. Step on the left. <laughs> it's better for you to leave this ministry and go somewhere and work than for you to sit in here and die. Now, I know, I don't care. I don't even care. I like to make junkies mad. We so holy, but we can't take no instructions. Some of y'all don't like it. I'm going to just go and say it, Sister Carla. They didn't like when I announced your name. I ain't got no more claps for her. Matter of fact, she's getting ready to be on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come against it in the name of Jesus. The way that you really know that you're holy, you can take instructions. Jesus was not a, 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 a king when he came. He came as a servant. When you serve, then he make you a king. You don't get to be king first. You got to serve first. Everybody kings, but everybody got to serve. Don't nobody get to see your attire that says you a king. When they came up on Jesus, they didn't know who he was because he wasn't dressed like he was no king. He was rolling with everybody else, doing the will of the Lord, raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out devils. And he didn't have on no dress code that said he was a king, but he was a king. So get in here and work. And if nobody don't give you a plaque, a pat on the back, you ain't working for Miller. You make sure you tell the Lord, I'm reneging on you today. You won't say that to the Lord, but you'll cross your eyes at me. <laughs> That's how junkies act. They get mad when they can't get their fix. Start having withdrawals if I go to 130. <laughs> Amen. I got to finish. Look at two and one. Real quick, we got to finish. My little children, these things write I unto you. Un, I write unto you that you what? That you what? That you do what? Now, is he telling us it's better for us not to sin? That we sin not? Is it better for us that we don't sin? The first thing, how many know, it's better to be obedient than a sacrifice. It's better not to do it than to do 20 years in prison and repent while you're in prison. You should repent before you go to prison. You should, you should not touch that woman instead of get divorced and then all of a sudden you sorry. Touch that man. You ought to repent before you touch him. Hello? How many of you ought to go to work instead of lose your job and all of a sudden you wish you had your job? If I get another job, I'm going to be just faithful to that job. You should have stayed on that job. Every parent in here, tell your child when they get a job, never quit a job without another job. You never quit a job unless you already got the next job. Because when you go to the new employer and you tell the new, not the, the person you're trying to get employed by that you quit the last job, they'll tell you, okay, we'll call you. Why? Because they say if you quit that one, you'll quit this one. No, no, you go in there to the next place and say, I'm presently employed and I was just trying to improve uh, my financial situation and I do believe if you give me an opportunity, my record says I haven't missed a day at the last job and I've been there for such and such a time and I would like for you to consider my resume. Thank you very much. You walk in there, I quit. <laughs> Why you quit? They made me mad. 
All right, you, you just go on out the door. Hold your breath till we call. I mean, we'll be calling you. <laughs> Please. Come on, this is what he's telling us, y'all. I got to quit. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Come on, somebody. Somebody go back to one and eight. You got to at least confess you sin. Don't be playing crazy after you sin. He said, I'm going to forgive you, but you got to confess it. You can't play like you didn't do it. Don't keep running around telling everybody why a situation happened and, and this wasn't my fault. Now go ahead and spit it out. I sinned. It was a sin, and it was a sin unto God. And when you confess your sin to God, he will forgive you. Is that right? That's what he's saying. He said, but you got to first confess it. Come on, rest on your feet. We got to go. Listen, you, you, you don't, you don't want to leave this message. You got some paper. You want to write down uh, uh, that First John 2, 1 through 5. You want to write that down. You want to write down Ephesians 4, 22 through 32. What's wrong with us? We in the church acting like we don't need to be here. We hear and know we need to give our lives to Christ or we're here and we act like we don't have nothing that's tempting us anymore. Jesus told us in the model prayer, I pray, Father, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all that is evil. Hallelujah. How many here today and you need to be here? Is there anybody here don't need to be here? Don't lift your hand up. But if you know you need to be here, lift your hand up. You know you need to be in the house of prayer this morning. Lift your hand up. Come on, let's confess. Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess I need to be here. I need Jesus to help me not to be a slave to sin. I need Jesus to give me the Holy Ghost to give me power to make my flesh behave the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life it is not of you help me I confess right now I am saved by your grace and your mercy help me please Jesus I confess it I need to be here. Let me feel your spirit today. Let me know you are with me today. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to every man that believe. Come on, first lady, please. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you tuning in. You've been listening to the New Life Church of Faith. We're located in Danville, Illinois at the Heavenly Square Mall. That's 1419 Bowman Avenue. We are a non-denominational ministry. All that means is we have no denominational preference. We believe Jesus Christ and him crucified. He is the foundation from which we stand. And we thank him today for giving us this moment to share with you. If you would at least confess Jesus, you are on your way. You're on your way. And if every day you will admit that you need Jesus to keep you from going back into sin, if you would not be ashamed to tell anybody, I need God to keep me from sin. God bless you. We're in Champaign also at 8 o'clock at the Lincoln Square Mall. That's 201 Lincoln Square. And we invite everyone to come, whosoever will, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. I hope you prayed when I was leading the prayer. I hope you did. We had altar prayer earlier. 